The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. I will tell you the honest truth. Today's gospel reading is weird. It's complex. It has a bunch of stuff going on inside such a small section of five verses. So I want to look below the surface of this passage and put it in conversation with the other lectionary readings from today. And hopefully that will make it less weird. To begin, you have to appreciate the political climate that is the setting for the gospel according to Luke. In this reading, there are the Pharisees, there is Jesus, and there is Herod. Now, people like to say that they don't want politics to get mixed into the preaching that they hear at church, but it's hard to ignore politics when they are the backbone of the gospel story. Jesus' interaction with the Pharisees has an element of political intrigue. The Pharisees were the religious leaders who really cared about following the commandments and decrees of Mosaic law, down to the minutia. The Pharisees are typically cast as the opponents of Jesus in the Gospels, but it's not that simple in the Gospel according to Luke. Oftentimes the Pharisees are challenging the activity of Jesus and his disciples, but in today's reading, they're warning Jesus to get out of town, almost as if they're concerned for Jesus's safety. That makes the Pharisees seem almost favorable toward Jesus. Their concern is about Herod, and it's not unfounded because Herod has already had another prophet killed, John the Baptizer. And you can see the plot now. Herod has killed prophets before and would easily do it again. The Pharisees may not like Jesus, but they know that murder is definitely a commandment to avoid. And Jesus is stuck in the middle, listening to all this while looking at Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem was supposed to be a holy city. It was the site of the temple and the center for worship, but something was off. Actually, there's some question whether Jerusalem was ever on from the moment Solomon finished the original temple. Something got corrupted in Jerusalem long before Jesus was on the scene. When the people decided they wanted a king to rule them, like the other nations around them had, they lost something. Jerusalem had slowly transformed over all those years into something it was never meant to be. Jerusalem was supposed to contain the sign of God's presence, but it became a tool of empire. Instead of relying on God for everything they needed, they turned to kings and empires and put their trust in them. So the Pharisees warned Jesus to get out of town that Jerusalem will not be a place that he's warmly received. And Jesus has this great snarky response where he calls Herod a fox, which is an insult. But it's not just an insult, it's a metaphor. Because right after that, Jesus refers to himself as a chicken. And I'm positive that you've heard about how foxes and chickens get along. Empires are ruled by foxes. But Jesus offers a different image, a different metaphor for the empire that he represents. The kingdom that Jesus represents is ruled a different way, by a mother chicken. 
Now, our dominant way of understanding God and how God relates to each of us is as a father. And Jesus did refer to God in prayer as Father. But Jesus is suggesting here that God's relationship to us is also feminine, like a mama that wants to protect her baby chickens. Is that surprising to you? God's way of comforting you is often unexpected, surprising, perhaps not what we envisioned. God's comfort can come to you in circumstances that otherwise might seem unfortunate. In this case, Jesus wants to comfort the people of Jerusalem like a mother chicken. It should be a little surprising to imagine God as a mother chicken. That image of unexpected comfort can be heard in the other readings from today as well. Things are not always what we expect. For Abram, it was highly unlikely that an heir from his own blood would ever exist. He was old, he had no children, but unexpectedly, surprisingly, God's comfort and promise comes to Abram in the form of smoke and fire passing through animal carcasses. How strange. God's comfort is somehow transmitted to Abram in this mysterious way, as heard in Genesis 15. It's also in the psalm today. It's hard for me to hear today's psalm and not put it in the context of Ukraine. When it appears that you are down and out, surrounded, outnumbered, defeated, when it looks like the end of everything is approaching, that is when God's comfort moves into action. Psalm 27 says, My heart will not fear. My trust will not be shaken. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter. Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Those words may fall flat on your ears, but listen to them through the ears of a Ukrainian. God's comfort approaches at unexpected times in surprising places. And also Paul has a word for the Philippians about the unexpected, surprising way that God comforts. It's through the transformation of your weakness into glory. Jesus will transform the body of your humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. God takes the things that seem most humiliating, your biggest weaknesses, and transforms them into glory. That is the message of the cross and Jesus' own crucifixion. When Jesus appeared to be the weakest, most vulnerable, that is when God's comfort and power transformed the cross into glory. It's all meant to be surprising and a little unexpected, like Jesus wishing he were a chicken that could surround and protect and comfort his baby chicks. However, Jesus' words are not purely words of comfort. They're couched inside a lament. Jesus is lamenting the fact that God's people, the whole temple system, and all of Jerusalem are not what they could be. They have not lived into their original design. They have not become a house of prayer for all nations. Instead, it's become something else, a place where prophets go to die executed by the people who have been called by God to live in truth, justice, and equity, but refuse. So Jesus laments. Jesus looks out at Jerusalem, the temple, the people of God, and wishes that it could be different. Jesus wishes he could wrap them up and comfort them. Jesus shows that true leadership has a maternal instinct. Even while being rejected by others, he wants to care for them. The time will come when he will be able to wrap them up and comfort them, but that time has not yet come. If you're searching for comfort today, 
if you're searching for peace, know that Jesus longs to wrap you up in his motherly wings and that comfort and peace might come to you in unexpected, surprising ways that you didn't think were possible. Amen.